Hey YouTubers, welcome back to John's Garage. So today we're working on the 2000 Acura 3.2 TL and we're going to test the fuel pressure using a brand new tool I just picked up at Harbor Freight Tools and also an adapter that you're going to need for this model of Honda. This adapter actually fits many different Hondas and Acuras. I got mine from Auto Auto Tool World and it is a Honda Pulse Dampener Adapter number 58670 and the uh, fuel pressure gauge set that I bought is from Harbor Freight Tools as I said MH-DCT19 so let's open up this pressure test kit and see what you get in the package So in this basic fuel injection service kit, is what they call it, um, you get a gauge with a nice rubber cushion on it, and you get this pressure bleed off valve and a long drain tube. I got this one instead of the other cheaper kit because this hose is longer than in the cheaper kit, and you get all these different connectors but none of them will fit on this Acura so what I ended up buying is like I said before this Honda Pulse dampener um, adapter and this we will take off uh, the pulse dampener that's right in front of the fuel pressure regulator and the only thing I had to do was this came with the wrong adapter because this kit is a threaded connector for the gauge and you see all these are threaded connectors these are uh, Schrader valves just like you have in your tire and uh, so I took the Schrader valve out of here and I just switched it I just put a wrench on there unscrewed that put it in here put some uh, uh, pipe sealant, some pipe dope on there and that's made for you know gas lines and uh, threaded, I put the, this is the one that came out of the uh, tool that I bought and so I just switched them. So now this is a threaded Schrader valve adapter so I can actually connect this by screwing it in so no big deal the, uh, they don't have any kits at um, Harbor Freight that are going to fit Acuras these are all uh, American threads uh, instead of Japanese threads so this one is a 12 millimeter by 1.00 so 12 millimeter by 1.00 So let's get this cover off because the fuel pressure regulator and the dampener are right under here. So let's get this cover off. 10 millimeter socket, lefty loosey. Just undo the four corner bolts. One, two, three, four. Unscrew those, take the cover off. Okay, the four bolts are loose. Take that cover off. Okay, so we're going to be working on the driver's side of the car, and since we are working with gasoline, I have a fluorescent light here with a cover on it, so I'm not using my standard incandescent bulb that makes a lot of heat, so I want to be a little safe around gasoline here. So, to show you the parts we're going to be working on, so this is the pulse dampener. So as fuel comes in under pressure, it's about 40 PSI, and it makes that turn, it's gonna make some pulsing. So this is a dampener. 
And then this is the pressure regulator and it has a vacuum hose right here. So we are going to, and this is a return line of the tank. So it goes, the fuel comes in, goes through this square block, goes into these high pressure lines, goes through the fuel rails, and then comes back. And after it goes through the fuel rails, that's when the pressure is regulated. And it has this vacuum, so when you're accelerating, um, it gives you more fuel pressure, and when you're idling, it's less fuel pressure. So we're gonna do a test, I'll show you that. So the part we're gonna take off, this is just a plastic cover on here. Um, you can leave this cover in place or take it off, doesn't matter. I'm not even sure what that plastic cover's for. Um, so we will take off just this piece right here and connect our gauge right there. And because we are working on a fuel system, a gasoline, and it is under pressure at the moment, or at least when the car is on, uh, you want to make sure you have a fire extinguisher handy and make sure that extinguisher is charged just in case and have it within arm's length reach. Uh, you don't want to burn your house down. You don't want to burn yourself up. So we're going to do this carefully. We shouldn't have any leaks or any danger. So I planned out a test with 10 easy steps. And first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect the vacuum line and clamp it shut. I'm going to first, before I clamp it, I'm going to see if there's any signs of gasoline coming out of the pressure regulator or any smell of gasoline. There shouldn't be any. So let's take that hose off and check. So I've pulled off the vacuum hose. I don't see any gasoline. I don't smell any gasoline. It smells like vapors from the uh, manifold, but not really gasoline. And there's no gasoline dripping out of here. No signs of it on the hose either. So we can clamp off the end of that line. Okay, so I just put some small vice grips on the end of the hose. Not using the teeth on it, I don't want to damage the hose. But it's clamped shut so we don't have a vacuum leak in our manifold. Okay, so now you want a 22 millimeter uh, box wrench and you're going to want to put it on here to loosen that so counterclockwise lefty loosey but before you loosen it there is some residual pressure under there so we're going to put a paper towel to make sure we don't get this on our face or spraying anywhere on the car it's not much gasoline but there is a little bit of uh, pressure on it. So if you got them, get some eye protection, some cheap plastic glasses. I don't expect this to spray anywhere, but just loosen that line. Okay, crack that line loose. Only a tiny little bit of gas came out. Uh, make sure your garage is ventilated because it is gasoline vapors. Now just turn that, take it all the way off. That was about 15 turns to get that off. So now that we have that off, we're going to replace it with this that we bought at Auto Tool World. So those threads should be the same in there. So the pulse dampener has a little metal gasket. Make sure that you don't lose that. It just sits right on the face of it. I think this hose is blocking your view, but you can see that I'm going to thread it right on there. Let's 
So I need a bigger wrench to tighten that on. Okay, so I'm just going to use an adjustable wrench for this. Okay, just snug that up so we don't have any leaks. And we are going to check for leaks. So take these flammable paper towels. I got a little bit of gasoline. And let's uh, wipe up any fuel that's spilled. And dispose of those paper towels outside. Okay, so now we got our gauge. And we're going to take the threaded end of it. And put this on here. Yeah, it's got a rubber seal in there. So we threaded that on by hand. Now let's put our gauge facing the windshield so we can see when we are in the car turning the key on. Okay, so now we're inside the car and I've got the gauge up here on the windshield. And I'm gonna put the camera on it so we can watch this when I turn the key on. Okay, got some light on there. Now let's get the key in the car and watch what the gauge does. Just turning it to the run position but not starting it. Wow, 50 PSI. We're going to turn the key off and wait 10 minutes and see if that gauge moves. I switch the key off and it's holding steady. So we'll give it 10 minutes and I'll start the video again in 10 minutes. Well, we're, while we are waiting for the 10 minutes, I'll tell you one thing I did when I connected the, the dampener adapter is I used a, an old oil drain uh, washer. It's aluminum, so it's soft aluminum. So I put that on there, it's the right size, and then I threaded on the adapter that I bought and snugged it down with my adjustable wrench. And after the first time I turned the key on, I checked for leaks. There are no leaks after I connected the gauge and you saw it went up to 50 PSI. I went to the engine with a flashlight and I looked for leaks and I felt around that adapter and the hose coupling for this gauge and there are no gasoline leaks. So that's important because that could affect your pressure here and cause a fire hazard when you do start up the engine and it starts to get hot. So we're still waiting for our 10 minutes. I'll say another thing about this car, it has a really quiet fuel pump. It's in the trunk, the access hole is in the trunk. If you reach all the way as far back as you can in the trunk and lift the floor mat up, uh, you'll see a silver plate there. And if you open that, the gas tank sits about an inch below that and the fuel pump is in the top of the gas tank. And when I turn the key on, I have to be in a really quiet garage just to hear that fuel pump activate. It just makes a slight little whirring sound. Just zzz for two seconds you'll get two seconds of pressure to fill the fuel rails but this car has the quietest fuel pump so we have waited ten minutes and we see maybe two psi one or two psi if you saw a rapid drop that would indicate there's a problem in the fuel pump with the check valve being stuck open and then when you turn off the car, all the fuel goes back through the line and uh, you lose pressure. So we don't have a problem with the check valve. That's good. Um, so now it's time to start up the car. Okay, so we're going to start the car. We have the vacuum line disconnected from the pressure regulator and plugged. So we should expect 41 to 48 PSI with the engine idling.
Okay. Engine idling. Who knows how accurate this gauge from China is. So we're looking at 52 PSI at idle with the vacuum line off. So I'm going to go and connect the vacuum line and see if that changes. Okay, we've got the vacuum line back on and we are at 45 PSI with the vacuum line plugged in, car at idle. Okay, so let's see what it does when we rev the engine, just a quick rev. It should go up because you need more gas, the vacuum is going to change. Another quick rev. Okay, so now I'm going to disconnect the vacuum and watch the gauge. I want to see if it goes up. And it should go up. Okay, it went up. I'm going to plug it back in. Went up to about 52. And I do have suction on that vacuum line. Plug it back in. The gauge goes down. So that is good. Here's a close-up where you can see the... Uh, aluminum oil drain washer that I used right there between this uh, adapter so that we won't have any fuel leaks. Just want to show you that. Okay so this this is the low pressure fuel return line to the gas tank. So you got high pressure fuel coming in from the fuel pump goes through the regulate goes through the fuel rails comes through the pressure regulator and then returns to the gas tank okay so I took off the return line loosened the clamp pulled it off and removed the gas cap from the filler tube and blowing through here you should be able to blow, it takes a bit, but you should be able to blow all the way into the tank. See if this line is plugged up or not. Should not be plugged up. And uh, if you have the gas cap on, it's going to be pretty hard to blow, so take the gas cap off. If you have the gas cap on and you blow really hard in this return line, and then after you stop blowing into it, you can feel the pressure of all that air you just blew in coming back out. That's interesting. Okay, we got everything put back on. We got our little washer with our uh, pulse dampener, and we put this hose back on the return line with our clamp and our vacuum line. Now we're going to start it up and check for leaks. Feel around there, look around, make sure there are no gasoline leaks, and then we're going to put the beauty cover back on. So we're just going to turn the key on. You get two seconds of pressure, so we'll see if there's any leaks. We'll just turn in the key on before we start the car and generate heat from the Okay, we felt all around here, all around everything. There are no leaks, no gasoline leaks, so we're good to start it up. Okay, the cover's back on. Looks like our fuel pressure is good, so nothing to repair here. This was a good test, and with that, we'll call that job done.